to do real quick is find an equation for the loading on this uh, beam. And the way we're going to do it is we're going to cut at an unknown point between point loads. So we're going to start off with some x that goes between 0 and 2, because we see a point load at 5. The first step is, of course, solving for the supports. However, this is a very simple one, so I bet you can do it with just looking at it. What do you think uh, AY will be? Half of it, right? And CY? OK, there we go. So now we have a very simple free body diagram with all of the forces acting on it. What we're going to say is each one of those point loads, whether it's a support reaction or whether it's the applied 5 kilonewtons, is going to have a discontinuity. So we can't graph through it. So we're going to start off and we're going to say 4. Zero is less than x, which is less than two meters. We're just talking about this section right here, between a and b. For that section, we're going to come up with an equation for shear and an equation for moment. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to slice through it somewhere, but we don't know where. Instead of having it be one meter away from a, we're just going to say it is x from a. That distance is x. It's unknown. And then we're going to draw the left-hand side, free body diagram. OK, I have the 2.5 kilonewton support reaction. If I cut it at that red line, there's no other forces acting. So I'm just going to go ahead and put on my shear, my normal, and my bending moment. Notice I don't have subscripts because there's not a point. I'm not dealing with any individual point. The one other piece of information I need is the distance. The distance from here to the point I cut. So we do just the same thing we did before. Sum of the forces in x. That gives us our nc is 0. Or actually, uh, I'm not using a subscript because we don't know what point it is. So our normal force in that component part of the beam, which is 4, 0 is less than x, which is less than 2. Normal is equal to 0 the whole time. Then we do some of the forces in the y equals 0, and we get 2.5 minus v equals 0. So v is equal to 2.5 uh, kilonewtons. And then we do some of the moments about whatever that point is is equal to 0. We're going to have our moment, which is positive, minus 2.5. And what do I multiply 2.5 by? x equals 0, so my moment's going to be equal to 2.5x. Any questions about how I did that? OK, so now I can start making a plot. I'm going to go over here, right? I normally do it right under my free body diagram. This time I'm going to do it right under the diagram. And I'm going to call this my shear diagram. And the units are going to be kilonewtons. For my shear, the equation is shear is equal to 2.5. Well, that's a pretty easy graph. 2.5. It starts at 2.5. It ends at 2.5. It's a straight line. But it only goes from 0 to 2, because that's all that our free body diagram covered. Right? And then I'm going to do bending moment. My moment, which is in kilonewton meters, is going to be 2.5x. The easiest way to, to plot a straight line is to plug in a couple numbers. If I plug in x equals 0, what do I get? 0. And if I plug in x equals 2, what do I get? So I have the start of my graph. Now what we're going to do is the exact same thing, but we're going to do it for the right-hand side of the 5 kilonewton force. Um, for you, just keep writing down your page. For me, I'm going to erase a few things so that I have enough room here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a cut somewhere over here, somewhere in between the 5 kilonewton force and the other 2.5. That means that my new range is going to be from 2 meters to 4 meters. So for x between 2 and 4, I'm going to redraw the free body diagram. I'm going to draw the left-hand side again, because I, I always want to draw the left-hand side when I'm doing a plot. It makes the x much easier. Can I draw the right-hand side? Sure, but it makes it more challenging, because your x is, is not from the right-hand side. Your x starts on the left-hand side. Okay, So I have to put this 5 kilonewton force on there. 
And then I'm going to draw my shear, my normal, and my moment. Okay, and x is starting over here and going all the way. Actually, I'm going to put down at the bottom. x is starting here and going all the way to the point. That's x. And this distance is 2 meters. Okay, now I'm just going to do the exact same thing. Some of the forces in the x, n equals 0. No change there. Some of the forces in the y, we get a little bit of a change. It's now going to be 2.5 minus 5 kilonewtons minus v equals 0. So v is now equal to negative 2.5. And for the moment, we're going to have moment minus 2.5 times x. No change there. But then we have to add on to it a 5 kilonewtons. And what do we multiply that by? We, we need this red distance right here. x minus 2, good, because x is the full distance, and 2 is the distance to 5. So it'll be x minus 2. All of that equals 0. We solve for m. m is going to be equal to 2.5x minus... 5x plus 10. I did two steps there. I probably should do it one at a time. It would be the moment is equal to, I mean, just move everything to the right-hand side, 2.5x minus 5 times x minus 2. And then I distributed the 5. Any questions about that? So my moment is now equal to negative 2.5x plus 10 kilonewton meters. That's my new moment, and that's my new shear. So we're going to put that on the plot, negative 2.5. I'm going to go ahead and have my open dot and go over to there. Whoa, a step function. And then what we're going to do for the moment is plug in two points again. If I plug in two meters, I get 5. So I'm right there at 5. If I plug in... 4 meters, I get 0. Okay, And then what we do in this class, and this would probably make some of your math teachers really unhappy, is we draw a vertical line connecting the two. Actually, it looks like I have a few more slides that kind of sum it all up. Uh, this one is just showing you a much clearer uh, diagram than the one I drew, <laughs> where you have shear is equal to 2.5 up here, and negative 2.5, it goes up here. One thing is when you're doing these graphs, do not give me a like, you know, a scale, 0 through 10, and I have to somehow guess what your line, where your line fits. Don't want that. You'll be marked off if you give me that. I need values, right? You solve for the values mathematically, put them on your chart. Don't put a 2 and a 3 and the line right in between and expect me to guess it's 2 and a half. Write down 2 and a half. Okay? You have to write down any values that are maximum or minimum, and any values where it crosses an axis. All of those should be labeled on the chart very clearly, the, the real number, not the approximate number. I recommend doing it just like it shows here. You notice on top there's the full free body diagram, and then right under that's the shear, and right under that's the bending moment. You might ask, what about the graph of the normal force? Well, most of the time when you're doing this type of analysis, you're analyzing beams, and beams are meant for shear load and bending. They're not meant for normal force. It doesn't mean there isn't a normal force. It just means we don't typically deal with it, so we don't make a graph for it. What's the procedure? Step one, which we've talked about a million times. Determine support reactions by drawing the full free body diagram. Second step, section the beam at each general location x between concentrated forces. That's very important because we just found out that concentrated forces cause a discontinuity. So we have to do each section of the beam between those. We can't do it across them. Uh, and draw the free body diagram. Draw the free body diagram with an x for the distance. The next step is calculate the equations for shear and for moment by applying equilibrium equations. And you're going to do that for each free body diagram that you draw. Finally, draw the diagrams directly aligned under a free body diagram of the beam.